Hi everyone and welcome to And So On. My name is Lisa and today I'm going to show you everything I made in December and January. Okay, welcome to 2021. I took an unplanned break from blogging, vlogging in December and uh, no, no drama around it. It's just kind of how it worked out and I saw that there was a ton of content being put up by other people during Vlogmas. I probably had 20 or 30 videos per day on my feed and so I thought there is a lot of content out there right now. I'm going to take my time and come back in January and, uh, and hit the ground running. That said, I did get a lot made in December and January, and so I wanted to share that with you. These are all sewing makes, except for one. I have one knitting one that I just had to share, um, but I did knit a lot of hats and cowls and things in December for gifts, um, but I don't have those right now, so maybe I'll go into those in a knitting video, we shall see. But I have my notebook here, and I am ready to show you what I made in December and January. Okay, so number one is my Morgan jeans are done. And I'll stand up quickly, but of course, I'm going to show you pictures, um, but these are my Morgan jeans and uh, I will put in a bunch of photos of these. So these turned out so good. I could not be happier. Even, even when I first finished them, I wasn't sure because I had heard nightmares of like, of denim, like bagging out and not fitting well by the end of the day. And I have to tell you, they fit great. They haven't, they, they have maybe got a little bit looser. Yes. Okay. But not like a baggy mess, which is what most, that's the quote that I read on a few different blogs. Um, I made, I cut these down one size. So if you remember in my last video, I believe that I said I was making a 10 and then I did base it together and tried it on, which I absolutely recommend. And the 10 was too big. And so literally all I did was cut down to the eight. I made no other adjustments and I just decided to go for it. I did not do flat felled seams on the the outside because I just assumed I was going to have to change something and I didn't want to have to go back and pull at the top stitching, which I had done on a few different, uh, a few other seams earlier on. So these are, you know, simpler perhaps, but they are awesome. I wear them a ton. I like that they don't have stretch to them. Like, you know, I mean, I love stretchy jeans as well, but these, I find they hold me in. I feel, I feel, they feel sturdy. They feel strong. Um, the only thing is I'm probably going to have to redo my buttonhole because I was, I used the closet, closet core patterns blog quite a bit and they have a, um, like a tutorial basically for each step. And one thing they said about the button is they said, make sure that you move the button as far as you can towards well, like you want it to be more snug rather than more loose. And I took that to heart and I probably am pulling a little too much in the button. And so the buttonhole is getting a little bit of extra wear and tear. So I think I might end up having to reinforce the buttonhole. That said, it's fine. It hasn't torn through or anything like that, but it is starting to shred a little bit. I haven't washed these yet just because I haven't really needed to. Um, I will put them in the wash soon. Some people said they actually put their, their jeans in the freezer. My guess is those people don't live in Europe because <laughs> European freezers are micro. You basically can put in your ice and maybe, you know, a couple things of soup and that's about it. Like they're very, very small. So I don't, I don't have room in my freezer for my jeans. I'll tell you that much, but I did use the button. Let me show you one more time. The button here on these jeans, I don't know if you can see that from there is actually the button from, a, or the extra button from a pair of jeans that I bought for Audrey last spring or something like that. And so I love the fact that I was re able to reuse the hardware. I did not put on any rivets, mostly because I just didn't want to get the, um, the tools needed to do that. I don't miss it. Um, yeah, so the top stitching, I think, turned out fine. It's not perfect. It's certainly not, it's not like it's poor in that someone would notice it. Um, and it's, it's straight enough. And there's times where I ended up on the back on the yoke, I think doing two lines. I was using the older machine and at times I would kind of fall off the seam instead of being on the seam. Um, but it's minimal. It really is. I mean, overall, these jeans are amazing. I would absolutely recommend the pattern and I am definitely going to make another pair this spring, probably in like a heavy cotton twill, I think would be awesome. 
So when researching the pattern, one thing I noticed was that you really want to get heavyweight denim for this pattern, non-stretch, that that's really important for the structure. So this is 14 ounce Lady McElroy denim that was gifted to me by Minerva in return for a blog post. And I have to say, I'm really, really happy with it. Like I said, it has not sagged at all. Um, it's still kept its shape. It's maybe a slightly, a slight bit looser around the, um, around the waistband, but you know, who knows? Maybe that's me, ha ha. <laughs> okay, now I had so much of that leftover denim that I was able to do a couple of other projects and I think I can even get another one out. Anyway, I made this blazer for Lily. Lily requested a blazer and she had very specific ideas of what she was looking for. And so this is called, I had to look pretty hard to find a blazer for a 12 year old, for a petite 12 year old. So this is the Roxy blazer by CKC Patterns. And I will link it below, of course, as I will link everything. Um, this is a lined blazer. I could have put a button on it. She did not want a button on it. I'll put in a little video of her modeling it. It was very cute. Um, and then on the inside is also a Minerva gifted um, cotton gauze that gives it a really cute look. Now, I didn't realize it, but this is actually uh, reversible, this jacket. Like, there's no reason why it can't be reversible. And um, so she can wear it both ways. The only other thing I did do was I did make a pocket and... I had to draft the pocket because it was not in the pattern. So I drafted a little pocket. I also lined it and, and yeah, and then she can wear it the other way as well. So that turned out really cute and um, she wanted it cropped. She wanted it fitted um, and she wanted it open. So those are all the things that she wanted. Okay, and then with the leftover, some more of the leftovers, I made a magic pouch. So if you guys remember, I was trying to find a pouch that I could make that would sit on the couch like a tray and have all of my knitting notions in it so that, and it was easy to just zip up and, and you know, put aside. So this is what I ended up with. So here is the magic pouch and it has a little, well, it can, not all of them do, but it can have a little handle and it's I, I use the top stitch thread as well to top stitch it. I regretted using the top stitch later because I ended up having to buy more top stitch thread to finish the jeans. <laughs> I kind of thought I would have tons and I didn't. Um, now the only problem, this was my first one and I actually stitched the zipper too close to the edge and so the lining gets caught in the zipper. So that's fine because it's for me, but I did make a few others. So here's here it is open, so you can see it has these little kind of wings that sit out, it has a handle, and then inside, let's see if I can do it without tipping in, all of my stuff can just sit there. I even took some pins and just stuck it in, and because it's denim, you're not, you know, gonna go all the way through. And yeah, so I've got all my little stuff sitting there, which is great. And then what I ended up doing was made, I made a few more. So I made a few more. Here's one that's gonna go off to my friend in Turkey. And I made it out of my favorite fabric. This is the seven berry fabric. Um, and what I did was on the inside, this one is much smoother, the zipper is much smoother. And on the inside, I put the orange and I used the reverse side of, the wrong side of the seven berry fabric. This fabric um, came from Nunoya in Barcelona and I still have enough. I, I just took off a little end to do this and I'm gonna be doing a blouse from it soon. So, but isn't that pretty? I just love the way it sits. So I should have set this off weeks ago, but the post office is a bit of a disaster right now. So going there is a bit of a stress. <laughs> Okay, so I did a few of those and I also did a few of the noodle head uh, open wide pouches. I'll put the link below. I made six pouches for the girls' teachers, I think it was. The girls picked out the combo of fabrics they wanted for their teachers and I got a bunch of these zippers on Amazon. I think it was 20 of them for eight euros or nine euros or something like that. And I love that they have the little circle pull. And so I did a ton of those. <laughs> so that took up a lot of time as well. Okay, then for Christmas, normally I make the girls pajamas for Christmas, but um, this time I bought them pajamas because I found some really cute ones and I made them each a sweatshirt. So Lily really wanted a hoodie and here is her hoodie. There we go. So this is a free pattern 
from Brindle and Twig. And it's called, I think it's just called the free hoodie from Brindle and Twig. <laughs> I think it's called the Raglan, it might be called the Raglan hoodie. It's a Raglan hoodie. I'll put in some pictures of her wearing it. She absolutely loves it. The fabric is from Tipa Fabric, which is a online yarn, yarn, a fabric store here in Catalonia, small business that I ordered from on Black Friday. And um, ironically, the whole sweatshirt was supposed to be in the green. And then I managed to, um, at the last second, cut cut the sleeves wrong. Like I was so close to being able, I had worked so hard to go, how can I make sure that I get this whole thing? And at the last minute I did it wrong. I was so mad at myself because I had tried so hard to get, I think it, I think I only had a meter of the green and I thought, and I was gonna make myself something out of the purple, out of the wine color. And in the end, I couldn't do it. And so I ended up cutting the sleeves out of the wine color as well as the pocket. In the pattern, it actually has you leave this edge free. So yeah, so I have the pocket here. I did the scuba, the scuba um, version of the hood. So the fact that it comes right across like this instead of doing the lapped crossover because it used slightly less fabric. And the inside that I was gonna leave raw, I ended up cutting out of the um, the pieces that I cut wrong for the sleeves. So anyway, now it is a beautiful sweatshirt. She wears it a ton. As a matter of fact, when they left to go on a walk just now, I literally had to take it off her body. I was like, no, no, I need that. <laughs> Give that back. Yeah, so she wears it constantly. Um, it was a big hit. This pattern is fabulous. So this pattern goes from newborn to size, I think it was only size 9, 10. I think it was size 9, 10. Yeah, this is the largest size um, and she's a petite 12 year old, but still like this fits her generously. Like it fits her generously, it will fit her for a while. Uh, I highly recommend it. It came together in like maybe an hour, hour and a half. It was a really, really easy, uh, easy make, no, not at all tricky, really great instructions and free. For Audrey's sweatshirt, I decided to copy this so she had this in mustard that she really liked and so i took a pattern and i made it i made this now i don't have any pictures of her wearing it yet because i left it slightly unfinished i did not do the hemband or the cuffs because i wanted to try it on her first to see if it would fit she does really like it the neckband is not great and i have a couple neckband stories for you on <laughs> in this um but I love the fabric. Again, this is from Tipa Fabric, same thing. It's a very, very cozy, cozy fleece back, or, you know, like fuzzy fleece. And uh, yeah, the only thing is that the neckband is a little funny. Um, and then I just have to finish the edges, but it's very easy to just copy something that already fits them, you know, like that's kind of a nice way to do it. And um, she does like it, I just have to finish it up. So then I thought, okay, I'm gonna make something else for Audrey. This is now after Christmas. She has this little top, emphasis on little, that she got. It's got this odd thing where like half the neckband wasn't attached and they call that a feature. Um, and it's cute and it's boxy and she likes it because it's boxy and it's cropped. But the problem is, is that it's, it's shrunk. She got it for her birthday and it's shrunk multiple times. And now it's just too short. In my opinion, it's, it's too short for most outfits. So I thought, okay, why don't I make you one that's that you will like, that fits, but that's a length that I like. <laughs> so I also took a pattern from this and this is what I ended up with. In orange, it looks very orange on the screen. It's actually kind of a more of a rusty orange. This was a saga, I'm not gonna lie. I took a pattern, um, I then managed to sew the sleeves on backwards. I sewed them on with like at the hem end rather than at the arm side end. And then I had to unpick it. Luckily I got a new, um, <laughs> I got a new um, stitch ripper for Christmas. And then I almost sewed them on wrong again. I literally pinned them on wrong again on one side. and went, what are you doing? That's not right. <laughs> so I just switched it around. The drafting the V neck band, I did not do a good job and it 
I also like cut the V at the wrong angle. Anyway, it's a very long story, but basically I tried this neckband three times. You can see now that it's still a little bit lumpy on one side and the back, I'm gonna show you the back. <laughs> now that's pretty, that's pretty. Lumpy, bumpy, got a big chunk in it. Um, she likes it. Her hair covers it, she doesn't care. I'm gonna do better next time. It's one of those, just get it done. Uh, and, and because of course I had to rip out these stitches, it's all kind of like rumpled and stuff and uh, yeah, not my best work. However, she wears it, she likes it. This fabric is from, uh, this is a Lycra jersey from Cal Joanne, which is another Catalonian online small business. Really nice jersey. This jersey is 950, 960 um, euros per meter. Really, really nice. Highly recommend that. Um, I have it actually in four or five colors that I'll show you another time. So you'll be seeing it quite a bit. Um, yeah. Oh, and then, oh, then the last thing I did with this is that I cut it to the length that I wanted. So I cut it to the length. We, we tried it on her. We made it so that it hits right at the top of her jogging bands, waist, jogging pants, waistband, right? Right where she wants it. I thought I measured it. I cut it off and it was too short. I was like, are you kidding me? The whole point was to have a shirt that wasn't too short. So I took the portion that I cut off. I doubled it and I turned it into a hem band. And that actually worked out really well because it gives it some weight and so it hangs nice and boxy. And she wanted me, thankfully, to leave the um, to leave the hems of the sleeves raw, which, thank goodness, because I just wanted to be done with it. <laughs> okay, so m moving on with the with the hem band, with the neck band. So clearly, that neck band was no good. The one on Audrey's sweatshirt was not particularly great either. Um, now moving on to something for Lily. So the way children do, one day things fit and the next day they, they next day they don't. Like on Black Friday, I remember saying to Lily, do you need any new leggings? And she's like, no, no, I'm good with leggings. And then three weeks later, it was none of my leggings fit me. <laughs> they're all either too big because they're hand-me-downs from Audrey or they're too short because she's growing like a weed. So fine. I was like, okay, fine. I'm going to make you some leggings. So I have this Paisley jersey from Minerva, also gifted for a blog post. I'd had it for a while and I just hadn't, you know, hadn't done anything with it yet. And I thought, well, this is perfect. So one of the things with this time in our existence is that loungewear is much more accepted, you know, kind of all over the place. And so she can wear these as pajamas, but she can also wear them um, you know, under a sweatshirt or she can wear them wherever really, you know, like they're, they're equally accepted, um, as sleepwear or as daywear. So I used the pattern from scattered thoughts of a crafty mom free pattern. Um, this pattern goes up to 14. I cut her a 10 at the waist going down to a 12 and I just should have stuck with the 10 because they're actually still a little bit big. Now as pajamas, you want them a little bit big, but as going out where you generally want them to fit a little bit better. I'll put in some pictures. They do fit very well. Like I'm not knocking it. I just think that I probably should have gone down. So if you have um, like depending on the size of your kid you, or who you're making it for, just be aware of that. They do maybe run a bit big for my 10, my 12 year old. <laughs> Um, I used her tutorial for the yoga waistband. Um, basically, you cut two inches off the top of the pattern. The, she does it after she's cut it. She just moves the pattern down two inches and cuts it. So depending on you know how much fabric you have and if you want to use those scraps for something else. And then you do a six inch waistband. So um, here's the waistband and it folds down like this. I'm super jealous of these leggings because I, well, I want a pair. I'm gonna make a pair for sure. Um, I hate when the small of my back is cold. Like I hate it when, well, when the small of my back is cold. And I love the idea of having something that comes way up past my belly button that is soft. And I also hate it when I'm wearing something that cuts in at the waist. Like I hate sleeping in things with a waist, with, a, with elastic at the waist because I find find it uncomfortable on my stomach. So the idea of this, where there's no elastic in this, in this at all, except for the Lycra in the fabric, I'm not, I haven't added any elastic. So 
Yeah, so these turned out great. And then she wanted um, a t-shirt to go with it. She saw Audrey's t-shirt and she's like, I like that, I want one of those. She tried on the orange one. And someone on Instagram said to me, sent me a message when I had post that, posted um, Audrey's and said, there's a pattern very like that for free on the Lowland Kids, Kids website. So I went over there and sure enough, she has what's called the, I wrote it down, Lowland Kids baggy V-neck. This one definitely only goes up to size 910. And yet you can see from the pictures, Lily, it's way big enough for Lily. I mean, really it's probably too big for her. She can certainly grow into it, but let me show you. So here it is here. This is the Lowland Kids baggy tee. So you can see it's got a slightly, oops, kind of got it twisted up here a bit. Um, it's kind of lower at the back and it's got, she's, again, she, she, she slept in these. So I literally took them off her person this morning. I said to her, take those off. Cause I need to get dressed. Cause I need to record with these. And then of course she puts on something else that I need to record with, <laughs> but there you go. So you've got this, it's got a really nice shape, very easy. Look at the perfection of the V neck. I can admit when something looks terrible and I can admit when something looks great. And this V neck, is pretty much perfect. So why is it perfect than the other? Well, I don't think it's the fabric. Um, I think partially it's because I didn't draft the neck band. So the, the neck band's really well drafted. The instructions are very good, although it's not any different than the instructions I used for my other one. But one thing I did on this one that I haven't done before is I used the surging, um, the serger stitch on my machine. And I hadn't done that before. And I wonder if that's what was the difference. I wonder if that's what made it lie flat because it lies beautifully flat and I'm sorely tempted to undo the neck, the undo the neck bands on all of my t-shirts that have been less than perfect in the last year and redo them. The only thing, the only reason thing that's stopping me besides the fact that it'd be a heck of a lot of work <laughs> is, um, I wonder if I'd end up stretching out the fabric and so I wouldn't get a better result anyway. But I, I actually literally might do that, which I think is pretty hilarious. Again, I'm linking this fabric below. I really like it. It, uh, it has some lycra content. It is very nice to sew. I think especially when you're starting out with knits, you want a, a knit that has some structure because it does, this does not flop all over the place. Um, you know, the, the hem turned out really nice. All of the seams are really nice. Um, just so that you guys know, because I always like to know this, I used a jersey needle and for all of these. And for construction, I use a, I use a zigzag at a 0.5 width. So it's just going back, a back and forth a tiny bit and a two or 2.5 depending length. And then for the neck band, I use the serger, which I think might've made the difference. And then for a hem, I use a 2.5 width and a 3.0 length. 2.5 or 3.0 so that I get a nice stretchy hem. Okay, last but not least, my one knitting thing that I wanna show you guys. This is my Bright Feather. This is my Bright Feather sweater by Jennifer Steingass, who is also known as Knit Love Wool. Here is the beautifully fuzzy ends of the, of the cuffs. Because I know that most of you guys watching this are sewists, I won't go into a ton of detail, but this is just about perseverance. I mean, when I first, this is my first color work sweater. Um, and I'll put, I'll put in some pictures of me wearing it as well. Um, I, this has taken me probably longer than any other sweater to do only because I had to learn this new skill of doing color work. And initially I did not take to it. I did not enjoy it. It was too much focus and too much, um, detail, but I'm glad that I persevered because I just think it looks so pretty. Um, this is a mixture of wool, cashmere, angora, and mohair silk, depending on where you are in the sweater. So it's very cozy. And if you didn't know, the reason why color work, part of why color work was created was to, because when you do color work on the inside, you end up with these, what are called floats. So the, the 
thread that's not being used floats in behind the sweater. And what that does is it creates two layers of fabric and two layers of fabric is warmer than one and uh, creates more heat and, and holds on to more heat, right? So this becomes very, very warm. And actually it's very cold right now in Spain. It's unseasonably cold. Um, people are, are freaking out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I wore this yesterday and it was just so warm and cozy at the bottom of the sleeves I ran out of one of my fab one of my uh, wools and so I ended up see that's that's a mistake right there but that's okay um, and so I actually switched to silk mohair at the bottom so it makes the cuff a little bit uh, the, uh, the cuff a little bit darker but I just think that adds a feature and it's really really fuzzy and soft I haven't blocked this yet, which means I haven't soaked it and put it out to dry. So some of this will even out a little bit more, even though I think it's it's pretty even, I think, for my first color work sweater. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm very happy with it. Okay, that is all for today. Coming up, I'm going to have um, my a review of 2020. If I Hopefully it's not too late to do that as long as it's still in January. And I have, I'm looking at a bunch of new fabrics over there iron them up, got some plans for that. And as well, I will be doing a review of some of my knitting that will come up as well. So lots and lots planned. I feel absolutely renewed and reinvigorated to share lots of sewing with you guys. And I have lots more on the way. So thank you so much for your patience with me while I had a little hiatus. And I hope that you are all well. I hope that you are all keeping well. I hope that you are all keeping your spirits high and I will be here to bring you some entertainment very, very soon. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.